Good morning, how are you? And welcome to Aries New Moon today. Yesterday we had the equinox and whilst I'm no astrologer, I am very much interested in how the astrological events affects how we are showing up, what's happening for us, what's happening for me. In the last hmm, couple of years, I've really noticed that there's a correlation between the things that are happening for me and to me uh, and what's happening astrologically. And for the longest time, it wasn't something that I was very focused on. And yet now the correlation is so um, evident that it's something that I take into consideration quite a lot. So today is the new moon. Today is the new moon in Aries, which is the astrological new year. For those of you who are familiar with astrology, I bet you'll probably know way more about this than I do. But what I'm particularly interested in is that we are at a point now where we are creating, we are so fully engaged and aware of how our thoughts create our reality that today is almost a choice point. It is the day from now on that we get to create with intention, we get to create with um, curiosity, with awareness, with action, with uh, deliberate action, I should say. And why this is important is because for the longest time, me especially, we've been, I have been living from a place of woundedness. Uh, I have rejected myself, I have uh, hated myself, I have doubted every decision that I've made, my ability, capability, all of it in, in being able to just live my life, in being able to just be me and accept and love myself as I am. It's not been an option. And about a year ago, it was definitely um spurred on by my relationship my new relationship I had to start to come to terms with the thoughts that were holding me back with the thoughts that were keeping me looping and uh, suffering and in pain the ones that I didn't even know were there up until recently I didn't know the what my hard drive my thought hard drive what what the what the words were running, what the thoughts were running, what the pictures and the images and the beliefs that I had about myself were running. I didn't know, I didn't recognize it. I didn't, wasn't on my radar at all until, and I was, what I would say is I would, I was comfortably uncomfortable. I could have quite happily have lived my whole life thinking these self-deprecating thoughts about myself, having desires, but not really meeting them, not really going after them because I didn't believe that I could uh, and blaming other people. I did that a lot, believing that um, there was something wrong with me. There was something fundamentally wrong with the way that I was made. Uh, and it was not within my ability to be able to change that. And in the last year, what's happened is those thoughts have become so uncomfortable and in direct opposition to what I've wanted to create for my life and how I wanted to show up. And through Mars Retrograde for the last six months, they have been so powerfully in my awareness that I haven't been able to escape them. I haven't been able to numb them out. I haven't been able to use all of my normal tools to be able to show up and pretend it's not happening. I had to face them. I chose to face them. I chose to see what was going on. I chose to have a look because the alternative was even more numbing. It was even more distraction and even more pain and suffering. I am so utterly committed to creating a life that feels empowering for me, that feels free. That is 100% my most core value is freedom. Freedom from suffering, freedom from pain. And as even as I'm saying that to you and sharing that with you now, I can feel that starting to, uh, that fire igniting in my heart, uh, that drive, that passion is so 
there ever ready the moment I start talking about freedom and liberation from these things it's it's I'm utterly connected to that and in this last year <clears throat> what I've realized is that it's not actually about becoming something else it's not about rejecting the person that I was and finding so many flaws and faults that all I focus on is the good bits and that the bad bits will then just disappear. First of all, there are no good and bad bits. That was the one of the biggest revelations. And the other one is I am so beautifully and perfectly made the way that I am right now with all of the bits that I can feel coming up that go against that belief, the parts of me that want to reject myself, that want to believe that I am uh, not capable or worthy or lovable and all of those things, I can feel them wanting to come up to the surface, but they're not true. They're not true. I am lovable. I am empowered. I am uh, passionate. I am capable of choosing the thoughts that I have and the way that I want to create my life. And it compounds. So each time that I had something difficult come to the surface, each time that something showed up, what I noticed was I had, I had to choose how I was going to respond. I had to choose cu curiosity. I had to choose courage. I had to choose awareness. I had to choose to create a different pattern. I had to pause. I had to pause to go, hang on, how I've been reacting to these things in the past is not serving me, is not working for me. So how am I going to create something different? How am I going to show up today and choose to do something different in a different way, in a in a way that says, I choose me, I choose love, I choose empowerment, confidence, self-care, compassion, repeatedly not allowing shame to be my driver, fear to be my driver, anxiety to be my driver. They can come along on the ride with me. They can come along, uh, they're gonna come along on the ride with me because they are my teachers, doubt, fear, anxiety, um, shame, they are my teachers. They are not what I should be running away from. They are not the things that are wrong about me. They are the signposts, the parts of me that are going, you need to have a look at this. This is the bit that needs your attention. This is the bit that wants you to show up and say, help, help me, look at me, comfort me, so sort me out. I need some help. I need you. I need you to come in and be my parent. I need you to come in and show up for me because in the most incredible way, but simply for the end goal of accepting myself exactly as I am today, loving myself for who I am today, who you are today. And if that is the only thing we were to focus on in terms of our healing and a life journey for consciousness evolution of um, awareness of ourselves, it would be that, in my opinion, it, it, above and beyond all of the other stuff. What am I thinking of? Um, maybe, uh, you know, figuring out what the chakras do, figuring out my past lives, figuring out all of these kind of things. They're like, there's nothing wrong with those. But at the end of the day, this whole life experience is about your relationship between you and you, me and me, and then me and you, and you and me, and how we're going to do this dance together and how we can love and support each other and be kind and offer safe spaces and places for each other. And it all starts with understanding that we are the creators of our worlds, understanding that we are the creators of our lives. And it happens in the way that we think, because what we think creates our behaviors. Our behaviors create our feelings and our feelings is what gets reinforced. So if you are feeling a feeling, it has come from an initial thought, whether conscious or subconscious, 
That is the choice. You either become conscious of your thoughts or you leave them to become reactive subconscious thoughts and then you perpetuate the same behavior over and over again. So today, like I said, feels to me like the beginning of spring. Well, it is the beginning of spring. It is the beginning of the new astrological year. It is so ripe of energy, so full of energy and possibility and expansion that what you ground into this new moon energy today, into this new equinox uh, spring energy is what you're going to carry forth with you for the rest of the year. And so I like to take some time I mean, I like to take time regularly to connect with myself, like daily connecting into myself, because I know that that's what makes a difference. But especially I mark these points throughout the calendar as uh, moments where I really get clear with my intention. What is it that I want to do? What is it I want to think? What is it I want to create? What is it? How do I want to show up for myself and for others? be really mindful uh, of who I am in those spaces, of what it is that I am doing and how I am doing it. And I use tools. Uh, I use lots of different types of tools and I'm constantly collating tools as my journey develops and goes along, as my journey with my clients develops and goes along, constantly learning, constantly adding to toolkit, trying them out, seeing what works, upgrading the ones that I've had uh, in my toolkit for a long time and then there are others that are the most incredible that I have throughout the whole time and one of those is my aroma point therapy connection and how I use essential oils and the consciousness of essential oils to support my own consciousness journey and just again just talking about that lights me up it fills my soul full of possibility and knowingness because I have used these tools for the last three years and I know that they work for me. I know that unlike um, traditional, well, not traditional, but allopathic medicine that goes, wants a quick, fast result, essential oils are um, much more about compounding. They take time, they build time. And that is how our journeys work. They take time, they build time. We are supposed to take our time with this. It's not supposed to be a rush. And I know it's not supposed to be a rush because I've been rushing, trying to get to some imaginary end point for 20 years. And I realized that there is no end point. There's only today as the point. Today is the point. And so how I show up for myself, with myself today is how I get to live the end point, <laughs> which is death, ultimately, you know it, I know it. Um, and even then, that's not really the end point, is it? So frankincense is going to help me, it's, it can help you too, with the thoughts that you think, how you are thinking, how you are you, what is your mindset? Is it empowering or is it um, um, making you feel like shit? Which one is it? Which one are you going to choose? And I know that change is hard. I know it's difficult. I know it's challenging and I know it takes effort. And when we're already full up at our limit, effort feels like too much. But it's it's either... It's so worth it. It's so, so, so worth it. And if you resist it like I did, then the universe comes in to give you the fastest route to what it is that you want to create. And for me, it needs a really empowered mindset and a loving one to be able to bring and birth what I want into this world now through me, my creations, my creativity. It needs me to show up uh, authentically and empowered not every day can't do it every day well not yet uh, we're definitely going towards that everyone has good days and bad days or inward days and on top of the world days and so frankincense 
the consciousness of frankincense and that's what I work with you can work with just the essence and the medicine of frankincense that works too but I like to work with the consciousness which means that each oil for me has an essence a living essence uh, and a vibration which frankincense is like the divine masculine it's a, the masculine embodiment of uh, truth of boundaries of authenticity of uh saying yes to this what is good for you and no to what is not it is about values it about it is about truth truth for you and truth for me truth that resonates deep within us and finding the thoughts within our consciousness in sorry within our mindset that do not align with truth and frankincense is also the connector between us and the universe, us and our external energy systems, uh, the consciousness, the guides um, outside of ourselves that obviously we are connected to all of the time. But frankincense can be that bridge. It can be the thing that opens us up allows a different framework a different possibility a different frame of reference frankincense can be super powerful in that way and so if you've got frankincense i'm going to encourage you to uh, use your aroma point therapy which is as an aroma point therapist is my favorite way to use essential oils and i'm going to put a little bit on the um my in no my middle fingers and i'm going to put my left hand on yin tang, which is that center point between the eyebrows, so the third eye. And aroma point therapy uses the lightest of touch on acupuncture points. So we're using it on the third eye here. And then the other one is on GV20, which is the crown of the head. And you can close your eyes for this. Just sit here for as long as it takes, however long you need and feel the essence, the vibration, the consciousness of frankincense going into your brain, into those neural pathways, into your mindset and allowing it to transform and change, allowing uh, upgrades to happen. And just let it be, go with it until you feel a slight shift. You And you'll feel it, you'll either sigh, or your body will relax or your brain will start to fizz or you'll just naturally want to bring your arms back down by your sides, whatever. You will start to have that connection with you. And if you're already familiar with how frankincense works for you, then I definitely encourage you just to play around, see what happens, see what insights you get, communicate with the essence and um, the consciousness if you know how to, if you're familiar with how to do that. If not, just play. It's a good time to play. So I'm going to finish off by <clears throat> inhaling three times. It's just glorious. I love it so much. Four times. And I would like to encourage you to... Um, really spend some time advocating for yourself. Take some time to uh, be deliberate with your intentions and your creations. Stay curious in the thoughts that you're thinking about yourself and whether they need upgrading. And if you need help, reach out. I absolutely can support you with this. I am, uh, from tomorrow, the 22nd of March, I am launching the Heartful Academy, which is an eight session, four month container, all about upgrading our thoughts, creating self-love, kindness, nurturing, letting go of the inner critic, walking without boundaries, all of it, all of it. And it is powerful and potent, delightful, kind, compassionate, caring, Everything that I wish I had had five years ago when I started to decide that, yes, I wanted to love myself more and I wanted to heal and I wanted to show up for myself way more empowered. 
in the meantime, enjoy the new moon, enjoy this energy. If you're not getting any sleep, like I am, find uh, ways to ground, find ways to put your feet on the earth, to connect with those that you love, give them cuddles, get cuddles, get into some nature and have a wonderful, wonderful day. Lots of love. Bye.